Welcome back to okay fans to Nanalids at Dawn. I remain your host, Shadow Fury333, and this last match will be a match between Dying Friend and Lamadeus on IF4. So Dying Friend going for Hovercraft Factory, Lamadeus going for Light Vehicle Factory. This map looking subtly different, I'm not sure why. A little brighter or something. Anyway. Dying Friend starting out with some constructors, as is not uncommon on this map. Although this map, despite its size, is actually pretty rush heavy, as Lamadeus is kind of showing with the darts here. But, Dime Friend should be able to stop that. Daggers can deal with two darts at a time, no problem. I mean, daggers are basically two darts mashed together in terms of their stats. But still, the scouting has been completed. But yeah, seriously, if you look at the DPS, like, the dagger's 300 HP. Here, let's compare the stats here, because this is... I always find this kind of interesting. So the, de the DPS for... Oh, Tiger's actually DPS is lower than darts. Never mind. Oh, right. The stats got changed. It used to be the Gauss Cannons dealt 110 damage as opposed to 55 and had a two-second reload time as opposed to three seconds. So actually, it used to be the case that daggers were essentially just two darts. Like, twice as heavy, but twice as twice as long to reload. But no, daggers have been nerfed quite a bit since then, so never mind. That's no longer the case. They're still strong, though, but yeah, Dying Friend isn't quite going to be able to go as toe-to-toe -to -toe as I thought they would. I mean, darts are still going to die, obviously. But yeah, at this point, Dying Friend with a bit of pressure on Fail on Lamadeus, but not likely to be able to take care of the Scorchers quite yet. They're going to need to have about five just to get rid of one Scorcher and one volley. Five daggers, that is. Still, the important thing for a Dying Friend is they have their main base pretty much taken care of. They don't have a lot of money being spent yet. But they do have a moderately strong economy. Lamadeus is expanding a touch slower. I'm pretty sure that'll change soon. Although the Slash is coming in here to try to stop the daggers, which is something Lamadeus is well aware of with the radar coverage they have. And, yeah, that's not going to work at all. Nice try, though. I mean, at the very least, Dying Friend's well aware that there is an expansion... So that's something, but it's not quite enough right yet. So Lamadeus, their expansion is being a bit slowed. I mean, they have to maintain the defenses on top of their constructors, which makes sense. But hey, at least for Lamadeus, they aren't actually going to be losing too much, and Dive Friend's still managing to maintain a decently strong position. So overall, I'd say it's fairly even. I also like the fact that Dunfriend is, of course, setting up daggers to make sure they know exactly when Lamadeus is expanding over to the southeast. The southwest is already known, that's happened. But the southwest, they or southeast rather, that's not as well known. At the same time, Lamadeus is not all that aware of what Dunfriend's doing. Dunfriend's actually got quite a lot of room to get away with things. It's just Dunfriend is spending a little more time building up some defense, building up some power, not even defenses. They spent most of their money on their military. If you look at the factory. Factory here has normal priority, whereas I'm pretty sure Lamadeus... No, we're also running normal priority. Never mind. I'm not sure what is going on then. Unless the commander or constructor is on high priority. Yeah, that constructor is high priority. This constructor is normal priority. Where's the commander? Commander's high priority, whereas with Dying Friend, the commander... Ah, that's why. Commander's normal priority. That's what's going on. The commander and the workers are all at normal priority. So Dying Friend is getting quite a bit more in the way of units, but quite a bit less in the way of rapid expansion. But that's actually all right, because Dimefriend's doing quite the harassment job here. I don't see them getting rid of the Mason in time, though. It'll take another three sh or five shots, which is another 15 seconds. And by that point, the Scorchers are going to have arrived. Like, there they are. That's the Scorchers right there. Had two Daggers been there, that would have been enough. But unfortunately for Dimefriend, they only had the one. So Lamadeus continuing to build up the north... Sorry, Dimefriend continuing to build up the northeast at the same time. Lamadeus continuing to push forward to the northeast, which is considerably more terrifying. But at the same time, daggers coming over to the south here, not managing to do a whole lot. Getting rid of one slasher, but you need half a dozen daggers to get rid of a slasher. That's the thing, I keep saying this. I should probably explain why. Because daggers have such a long reload time, but they're so alpha-based that you need to bear in mind how many daggers you need to kill the units you're trying to kill. In one volley. Because if you can do that, then you can take care of them quickly enough. And you want to have a couple extras in case you're fighting a group. So they can take care of them one at a time. And possibly if they're lined up nicely, you can take care of multiples at a time. But the idea is you want to take care of one at a time so that that way you can just worry about building 
just enough, take care of as many as are there, and you very rapidly get rid of their army. But of course, you have to do it one shot at a time, like one unit dead at a time. Otherwise, they're going to hit you during the reload time. If The best you can do is to reduce their army as much as possible in that first volley. And Dimefriend doesn't quite have enough daggers in any given position to do that, unfortunately. Still, the scalpels coming in here should be enough to take care of everything else. And some damage is now being dealt here. And that's half a dozen. That's as many as are needed on top of the scalpel. Unfortunately for them all, Scorcher's making sure work of all of that. These Scorchers will get down in a second, so at least that's not going to last too long for Dimefriend. However, Dimefriend's center control is not particularly confident or strong, and their northeast control is going to be completely torn up away from them thanks to these Slashers. Actually, I think the Slashers will be able to go through the northeast and around the side. The Halberds, they'll help. They'll be able to get rid of the Slashers fairly effectively. But I think we're going to see this Metal Extractor go down, possibly also here as well. And yeah, there's the Halberd coming in. Actually, the Halberd... Oh, that one on its own is not going to be able to do quite enough. It's, it's friends coming in, in the back, though. That is going to be able to do enough. I think the first one's going to... No, it's going to survive! No, it's not. Never mind. It does, however, go down fighting and quite effectively, too. So there's, quite, there's a fair amount of reclaim. 363 metal worth of reclaim over in that corner. Actually, right up front as well, there's another 240 metal. And inside of Dimefriend's territory here, there's another 500 or so. So Dimefriend getting quite a bit off reclaim. Unfortunately, not pushing as much as they could into their construction. They have 40 build power going into that factory, the Hovercraft factory. Lamadeus has 50 going into their light vehicle factories. So Lamadeus is winning by production. Although Dimefriend is managing to maintain a fairly strong hold on their territory. They are managing to maintain the center of the, of the map. And also stopping a stinger construction, stopping an entire firebase from being constructed over to the southeast. I don't think the masons are going to die. Not all of them. Some of them, yes. All of them, no. Scorchers, as I mentioned before, are the counter to halberds. Especially ones that aren't on hold fire. But, yeah, none of them are on hold fire. I'm a bit surprised that's not default on. I really am surprised halberds do not have default hold fire. As their default fire state. Because that is pretty much their entire gimmick, is when they're not shooting, they're armored. Regardless, the Scorchers over to the northeast are going to be a massive, meaningful threat. A couple of de a defenders coming up, maybe two. The daggers aren't going to be able to do enough on their own, though. They're going to try, and the line splash is going to help out quite a bit. But it's not enough. This entire northeast corridor is completely dead. If the quill goes down, that's it. And it doesn't go down. The daggers... Oh, maybe it does. Maybe it does. This is still... No, this is it. The quill's down. The daggers are gonna be able to take care of this. Another Quill is in position to rebuild, so it's not completely lost. And over to the southwest, Dimeframe managing to maintain a decent amount of control over there as well, but the Ravagers managing to get up to the Stinger. That's dead Stinger, possibly dead Commander. Scorches have also gone down, and the Quill should be able to rebuild all this stuff. It's not going for it. Instead, going for energy production. And Dimeframe burying themselves into the ground, into the dark vo Into the dark void? Is that water? No, it's just a weird glitch in this map. Okay, never mind. Anyway, I figured, like, black water. That would make sense, but nope. Anyhow, with that... With that firebase in the western side destroyed, that pretty much opens up the entirety of Dimefern's main base, or Dimefern's north side. The center is the only thing keeping it intact, and Lamadeus doesn't seem to care. They're going through the western and increasingly the eastern sides, as that firebase that was destroyed earlier is now completely constructed. The Halberds should be able to get in and deal with it, assuming they don't shoot too much. But they don't seem to be going for it. Both Lamadeus and Dimefriend with their commanders in holes, waiting for whatever's happening to pass. Actually, not a bit surprised by... I mean, I guess this is a little bit difficult, but I'm a bit surprised commander digging tactics haven't turned into... Like, you dig a hole with the commander, and then as the trouble is a bit away, you start digging a tunnel to get yourself out. So you, like drill down a bit, and then lift up the rest of the ground behind you, so that there's only ever one hole, but it's moving. I mean, it'd be really tedious, though. You have to, like, dig out a little bit in front, move forward, level a bit behind, because you want to level it. If you don't level it, it defeats the purpose, because then units can attack you. They can attack across the corridor. I mean, they have to attack specifically across the corridor, and if you go in a curve with the terraforming, that would still remove a lot of that potential. 
Hey, if you don't dig in a straight line, you should be fine enough. But yeah, if you dig in a straight line, then it opens things up and it means the commander's still vulnerable. But yeah, if you dig and then undig, and that would that would be kind of interesting to see. I don't expect to see that though. Typically speaking, once the danger passes, the commander gets pulled up onto the main ground again and then continues along. Or just digging an entire trench. Just dig trenches across the entire thing. And the commanders go across, and then occasionally they go over the top. I'm thinking a lot about World War I recently, apparently. But that seems meaningful, given how much of a meat grinder zero-k games tend to be. And it looks like the firebase is going to be torn apart, or at least attempted to be, by the halberds, and these halberds are not on hold fire. So, no, that's, that's not going to help too much. I mean, they should be able to get in relatively close, but the stingers should kill them. Or actually, no, them, the levelers. The levelers and ravagers will kill them. Levelers and ravagers destroy halberds completely. And there's too many masons to kill in time. So this is it. Lamadeus should be able to take out the northeast. I don't even know if Diamond Prince is going to stay in the match any longer. This is pretty clearly the end. Time for managing a bit of a counterattack over to the western side, which isn't a bad idea, but it's not going to be enough. It's clearly not intimidating Lamadeus enough for Lamadeus to go, Oh, I need to go deal with that. No, they don't care. And they got gunships, and they got 90 metal per second coming in, and enough production to deal with it. Time for in with 60 metal per second, and enough production for that too, but it's still one and a half times more metal for Lamadeus. And now with the Banshees, that's basically it. And Dime Friend throws in the towel, realizing there's nothing more that can be done. Metal income was actually fairly... Actually, fairly in Lamadeus' favor for most of this, come to think of it. Reclaim was about even. Excess was a fair bit higher for Daimfreund. That early excess wasn't a huge deal, but it's later in the game. Unit value, though, yeah. Just didn't quite manage to maintain a position. That's the hard thing about hovercrafts. Like, you can't really use them without being extremely careful about how many shots you have on the daggers to be able to kill what you expect to run into. Otherwise, you won't kill it and the daggers will die. And then you won't have an army anymore. Which is why scalpels and halberds are so popular, because they don't have that really high alpha problem. A really high alpha characteristic, which ends up being a problem a lot of the time. Anyway, that is going to be it for me tonight, so I hope you enjoyed that. And... Yeah, that's it. So, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching, and have a good night, everyone.